Happy Halloween, everyone. As an appropriate topic for the occasion, I want to talk a bit about historical injuries. And even though most of you should already know that, I'm just going to point out that none of this is intended to make light of violence or promote it or you know, glorify war in any way, shape or form. That's never been my intention. And if anything, this should show you know, the, the gruesomeness and repulsiveness of real combat and war. So anyway, now that's out of the way. So since I did the zombie tests, which were appropriately gory for the season, I also wanted to talk a bit more about how we actually judge what realistic injuries or injury simulations are in case of these zombie heads from Zombie Go Boom. They've ob obviously done their homework, they've done quite a bit of research, and unless you've been part of the team and unless you know where they got their data from and how they make them, you don't really know. You can't know how accurate it is, right? Of course, people still say, you know, oh, that looks realistic, or no, that, that's, that's totally off. Um, based on what? Basically, gut feeling, instinct, like we, we visualize what would happen in a real life situation. But I'm just gonna go out there and say that none of you have cut human bone with a sword. I'm pretty sure that's a fair assumption to make. I'm, I would be highly surprised if any of you did, unless you're watching this from prison. I, whatever, I, it seems, doesn't seem very likely. Even if you've watched or even done tests on, on a pig's skull, for example, even that is not the same thing. A pig's head, of course, is very differently shaped. The thickness is not the same as on a human skull and all of that. So, and, and if you compare, compare it to things like coconuts, how close can that really be? However, what we can do is outside of testing different materials, we can also look at historical evidence of injuries. And I've read up on things lately. I'll um, post the links down below. And I want to give you a few examples. So this is mostly out of wounds and wound repair. That complete title, again, will be in the video description. Here the text describes archaeological finds from a battlefield in Switzerland. The battle was fought in 1499. And it says here that all blows penetrated the skull and sliced off a significant part of the bone and scalp, several centimeters in length and width. So these were 15 skulls. Here's a historical account of an assault and robbery. It says, Simon first struck John with a certain sword on the top of his head on the left side between the parting of the hair and the ear and inflicted upon him a big wound which was five inches long, three inches wide and which extended downward as far as the brain so that 13 pieces of bone were extracted from the wound. It doesn't sound too dissimilar from some of the cuts that we did on the skull. So again, it penetrated into the skull and, and reached the brain. However, this the victim actually survived, which is kind of amazing. And this is something that happened quite a bit, apparently. We have some archaeological evidence of healed wounds, and there were quite a lot of um, wounds to the head that also healed over time. People survived some pretty crazy stuff. Sometimes it can be really difficult to judge. Like People asked uh, which of these hits would be lethal. I can't say for sure. I would say the ones that we did on that head, most of them, if not all of them, definitely have a very high chance of being lethal. But you never know. Sometimes, as I said, people survived grievous injuries. Here is another one, another historical account. Struck in the head with a sword by a youth named Albuin. The blow penetrated almost as far as the brain, reaching from his left temple to his right cheekbone and jaw. And here we've got an account of a crusader who 
suffered three arrow wounds to the neck, continued fighting, and then he was apparently taken down with quite a number of injuries, included having his skull cloven in two, his lower arm amputated, and his jaw sheared off. That is pretty extreme. You've got some of the most brutal wounds here. Another example where the left parietal bone of the skull showed a three centimeter lesion probably caused by a blow from a sword or axe blade. The injury to the bone had healed, indicating that the individual had survived for a considerable time after receiving it. You wouldn't necessarily think that a wound like that would be survivable, but it was. It depends on a lot of factors. It's really, really hard to say, even when doing tests with realistic materials. Here's another one that illustrates that. 13 bodies suffered sharp force trauma, three blunt force trauma, and two penetrative force wounds, and six wounds were undetermined. More than half the wounds showed healing. So that's quite a high rate. Then we've got 73 crania with sharp force wounds, and 51 of those penetrated the skull. 22 didn't actually get into the cranial cavity. So quite a number of superficial cuts as well. And there was one other picture that also shows a fairly fine cut. It didn't penetrate all the way. So it's certainly consistent with my impression of how difficult it really is to cut into the skull or penetrate it with, you know, be it cuts or thrusts. So uh, it's, it's a pretty tough thing. I mean, it's, it's there to protect our central processing unit, basically, which is a rather squishy thing. So you would expect that to be reasonably effective natural armor, and it is. And um, here is one interesting thing pointed out. Axes tend to produce more fracturing in the test skulls than the swords, but this depends on the way the weapons were used, not on the physical characteristics of the weapons. Sharp edges that connected with the skulls in a chopping motion, where the force of the blow traveled in a linear way, perpendicular to the target, create wounds with characteristic fractures. Edges that connect through a slicing or cutting motion produce less fracturing. So. That's a little bit overstated because even with an axe, you don't actually hit completely linearly. You always, you, you swing in an arc and there's always a bit of a chopping motion going on. Right? Like unless you were to place the head on a chopping block and just, just go down like that, that's not gonna happen. So there's always some degree of slicing action going on. But at the same time, if you slice through with a sword, yeah, that may very well cause a d different kind of wound pattern and it wouldn't fracture as much. When you have examples like this, this really seems more like the result of a pole arm than a sword with how it fractured and also how large it is. And here's also a, a diagram showing uh, common injuries to the skull. And again, you see most of those lines are really um, partial cuts into the skull, but not all the way through. So considering that, I would say it's, it would be very, very difficult to actually cut the, the skull open you know, creating a bowl, if you will. Considering this overall, and also comparing to other materials I've caught with swords and other weapons so far, I would say that these zombie heads are quite reasonably realistic. There is one thing that seems to, or, or that has some potential for throwing the results off a little bit. Namely, it's got two layers, and the, the outer porous layer seems reasonably close to bone as far as I can tell and it also cuts fairly nicely. Uh, you can actually slice through it. And then there is an inner plastic looking layer, like a thinner layer that, that shatters rather than getting sliced. 
also the the earlier versions of, of those heads uh, two of which I, I tested earlier those seem to have been made of, of just that type of plastic as far as I can tell and that definitely tended to shatter more than being cut so yeah overall I think they did a pretty good job and those tests seem reasonably realistic as far as I can tell but you know there are plenty of caveats because ultimately we can't really know for sure but I still hope either way that those tests are somewhat enlightening if you will informative but of course also primarily entertaining who doesn't like to see fake bone splinters flying around and <laughs> you know, fake blood exploding all over the place it's a bit of mindless fun as well anyway so I hope you're you've been enjoying your October and you know having a nice Halloween and or if you celebrate it where you live I don't know and maybe you're enjoying the pretty lights in the background and all of that either way thanks for watching